What's up, Peppy? Well, my name's Lexia, and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're going to be doing a Northern Australian Blue Tongue Stink Care Guide. So if you're interested at all, please keep watching. Before hopping into today's video, I do want to show you who today's video is based around and that is my amazing Northern Australian Blue Tongue Skink Boomy. He is lovely. He is ah, freshly shed like two days ago so his colors look great. I am showing him to you now because I'm not going to hold him throughout the video while I can and they are very easy to handle as you can see. I do not recommend um, handling them for long periods of time and I'm not going to handle him throughout this video due to not wanting to cause him unnecessary stress. So yes, today's video is about Boomy. I will also insert pictures as I go along. Are you enjoying yourself? Um, and I just wanted to show him to you guys before, what is my cat doing? Oh my goodness. I just wanted to show him to you guys before I get to the main meat of today's video. So yes, my Northern Australian Blue Tongue Skink Boomy. All right guys, so we're going to start off the main portion of the video by talking about the enclosure. The recommended enclosure size for a Blue Tongue Skink, not just a Northern Australian, but Indonesians and all the other different types of Blue Tongue Skinks that there are as well. The recommended enclosure size is a four foot by two foot deep. These enclosures behind me, um, the main two boomies, and then this one right here are four feet long by two feet deep. And that is, in my opinion, the minimum enclosure size that you should use for a blue tongue skink. Some people say as much as a six foot long by two foot deep works as well. Um, Personally, this size works really well for me, and Boomy seems to enjoy it and use it quite a bit. Some people in the past have said, and I've seen it on a couple websites, and it's been mentioned in a couple other YouTube videos, that it has been noted that you can use a 40 gallon. However, that is only 36 inches long, I believe. Yes, it's only 36 inches long, and if your reptile gets around 28 to 30 inches long, that is not near enough space, in my opinion, for them to comfortably be able to roam around because they are quite active reptiles. Moving on from enclosure size, we need to talk about what needs to go into the enclosure, and that is pretty much the basic necessities that all reptiles need, which is a good substrate, a water bowl, a food dish, some enrichment, and or multiple hides. Um, you need a hide on the cool side and the warm side. I have hides all throughout Boomy's enclosure, and I have fake plants as well. If you've been on this channel and have seen my previous videos, then you know that Boomy was in a bioactive enclosure. However, I got an earwig infestation. I assume there were eggs in one of my plants that I had shipped, and I do not like earwigs. I'm actually very creeped out and grossed out and kind of scared of them. So I um, decided to trash the bioactive and he is now on a forest floor cypress mulch bedding. I have it about three inches deep so he can burrow because they are a burrowing species, which is something you need to keep in mind whenever making an enclosure for these guys. You need to ensure that you have a thick enough substrate to where they can fully hide themselves underneath. And then you also need to ensure that you have the proper substrate for the subspecies of blue tongue skink that you have. As I previously mentioned about a minute ago, the level of humidity and the temperature range will depend on what type of blue tongue skink you have. So for a Northern Australian blue tongue skink such as Boomy, thankfully I don't have to keep too high of a humidity. So the humidity for these guys is between 40 and 60% which is a relatively, if not really, easy humidity to keep depending on the type of enclosure you have. PVC, part acrylic, or glass enclosures um, with not fully mesh or covered mesh tops would be able to 110% be able to um, hold this type of humidity. However, if you have a higher humidity needing blue tongue skink, I recommend something such as a vision enclosure or a different type of PVC enclosure that will really hold it in a lot better. Nothing with a mesh top just so you can keep that humidity where you need it. However, like I said, for 
northern Australians, it's 40 to 60 percent, so it's super easy and really, really achievable, especially in the climate I live in. Okay, so as I mentioned just a couple of minutes ago, the temperature level will depend on what type of blue tone skink you have. Thankfully, northern Australian skink temperatures are incredibly easy and achievable. Um, the cool side is a 75 degree Fahrenheit to 80 degree Fahrenheit range. The warm side is a 80 to 85 degree Fahrenheit range. And the hot spot or basking spot needs to be 95 to 100 degrees. Um, make sure that with lights or things that need to get up to 100 degrees, you do have a thermostat of some type or that you accurately can check the temperature just to ensure that your skink is not overheating as well as ensuring that the enclosure is not too cold and that they are getting the proper temperature needed so you don't risk something such as a respiratory infection or other illnesses that can come from improper care. Moving on from humidity and temperature, we're gonna go into lighting. This is gonna be very brief because it's a little bit debated. Um, in the reptile community if a blue tongue skink actually needs a UVB bulb or not. I personally provide one because I see nothing wrong with providing supplemental UVB through light for species that don't need it. It doesn't hurt them um, and it can only really help them if it does help them but since there are no bad effects to it I go ahead and do provide UVB for my skink and all my other reptiles as well. When it comes to feeding a blue tongue skink, it is just as easy as all the other things I have talked about, if not easier in the sense that there are so many options and as long as you keep a varied, balanced diet, you are fine. They thrive off of a wide variety of foods. Um, some people I know do a high quality um, dog food. It can be a wet dog food, I believe, not a dry dog food. Um, but you can do like a premium canned dog food, include things such as um, the vegetables they require and some snails or some fruit, things like that to just kind of add in variety. That's a good way to feed them. They have certain brands that create little powder mixes that are really good. I have Rapashi Superfood Bluey Buffet and I add in vegetables or I put on some fruit on it sometimes. I don't feed this one every meal. This is just kind of one of those good things that you can include a couple times a week. It has a really, really good ingredient list. The first ingredient being Black Soldier Fly Larva Meal. Um, and the, cro the crude protein in this is 30% and the crude fat is 10%. I really like this one. It's super easy if I don't have time to chop up veggies or fruit and um, helps me whenever I'm on the go or having a busy work week. This stuff is amazing. Um, they have other brands too. I think Pangea has one. Um, I don't remember the other ones, but I still recommend having variety and not only feeding this just so they don't become picky and you ensure that they're getting everything that they need. Another thing I've looked into and I actually am probably going to try here soon is Reptilinks. They have one that can be used for blue tongue skinks. It is a herbivore option that has both the protein and the veggies and the fruit and everything that they need in the little Reptilink. I don't think I would feed it in link form if I use it. Um, I've thought about getting some to try and like cutting them open and pushing the contents out onto the food dish. but. Um, I will do a review or just kind of tell you guys how that goes whenever I attempt that. Either way, as you can see, it is so easy to feed skinks as long as you follow the proper nutritional needs that they have. I'm going to put the little um, list for veggies down below or I'll add a link that tells you kind of different vegetables and fruits that they can have. And then um, right here, actually, I'm going to put their nutritional needs or the percentages that you need to aim for. Um, this is kind of what I stick to and follow by unless I'm using this. And then I know that this follows those requirements so I don't have to worry as much or be as picky with it um, if I'm using this super food uh, mix right here. And again, super easy. You just mix it with water and let it sit. Uh, you mix it with boiling water, let it sit, harden kind of like 
kind of like jello you let it get like jelloey and then you just cut it up put it on the plate um, sprinkle with whatever toppings you want and then you are good to go so yes once again so so easy to feed these guys as long as you know what you're doing in terms of nutritional value requirements the last topic we're going to cover today is handling and I say it's the last topic because it's the quickest topic and I don't really know what to talk about after this because I think I've covered it all. Um, but as far as handling, you saw earlier in the video they are incredibly easy to handle. I don't like having mine out for long periods of time due to the fact that having any reptile out of its enclosure for a long period of time can cause it unnecessary stress and I don't enjoy doing that to any of my reptiles so while I do handle the ones that need to be handled daily I don't like doing it excessively so yes he's down there but they are incredibly easy to handle. Um, I can reach in at any point and pick him up. I don't ever worry about if he's gonna bite me. Um, He's a very easy blue tongue skink. I don't know um, any really blue tongue skinks that are super aggressive or anything like that or I haven't heard of any online or seen any other YouTubers videos where they say that they are, you know, trying to bite or trying to be hard to handle or anything like that. So blue tongue skinks are incredibly easy to handle and because they are a bit larger, I would honestly be okay trusting a blue tongue skink with a child if needed but um the only thing that i would mention about handling is that you need to make sure not to support only the front half of the body or the back half like support both the front and the back so that the weight is evenly distributed and it doesn't put pressure on their body where it doesn't need to be so yeah i think that just about covers it all so let's get to this outro Alright guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of today's video. If you liked it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you are new here, please make sure to subscribe so you can watch my future videos. I appreciate you guys so much for all you do, and I know today's video didn't go into a lot of detail, but in all honesty, blue tongue skinks, or at least my blue tongue skink, are so easy that what you see with them and what you research about them it doesn't go much more into depth in terms of as long as you follow the care parameters that they need they will be fine um, again northern australians are different from indonesians and other types of blue tongue skinks so if you are looking into something such as an indonesian such as an indonesian or the other um, types i'm gonna make a little list here of all the different types of blue tongue skinks yeah, um, if you're looking into any of these other types of blue tongue skinks, I don't recommend doing your research with just this video. While the enclosure size would be the same and the feeding would be the same, that doesn't mean that the temperature, uh, substrate, and or heat requirements are the same. So always make sure to do your research um, and then research some more after you get the animal and then keep researching throughout its life. Um, anyway, thank you guys again for watching. I hope you had a wonderful time and I will see you next time. Bye! <music>